Welcome, everyone. I've been uh, covering and posting media bias, really going all the way back to the early years of the Bush administration. And I've never seen the media just so blatantly acting as an extension of the Democrat Party as they are right now. I mean, trust me, they've been bad and it's been obvious that, you know, they're biased for the Democrat Party. But it, it just keeps getting worse and worse. And you know, what I mean is, is they don't seem all that worried about putting on the appearance of objectivity anymore. And uh, they've just gone full left wing Democrat Party activist. And uh, we're seeing that manifest right now in regards to these latest attempts <clears throat> by this party to undo the 2016 election. I mean, they've literally since day one been trying to impeach him. And uh, yesterday on ABC and CBS Network News, they began floating um, like back up impeachment narratives uh, in case this latest attempt fails, suggesting that Trump's request to meet the whistleblower are themselves an impeachable offense. Uh, and Newsbusters has been covering this, uh, as they usually do. I highly recommend uh, the website. I've been reading Newsbusters for a very long time, probably 20 years now. And uh, <clears throat> they covered this saying, during a discussion on GMA, uh, it's Good Morning America, about the White House defense strategy, correspondent John Carl fretted, quote, in terms of this attack on the whistleblower, it has been relentless. He continued by claiming that the president's criticism of the unknown CIA official might bolster the partisan impeachment push by Democrats. Now demanding to know to out the whistleblower. Uh, his own aides have called the whistleblower part of a deep state conspiracy. George, uh, this could well be a violation of federal whistleblower protection laws <laughs> and is oh, also really? the kind of thing that could end up being one of the articles of impeachment against the president intimidating the whistleblower. So you can see what they're doing. They're taking something as benign as Trump simply requesting to know who is accusing him of these things that Trump says are total lies, just like he said the Russian collusion claims were lies, and it turned out that he was right. Um, and they're taking that request and they're saying, oh, these are threats. Uh, he's targeting him for attack. Uh, that's not what's happening, um, but that's the way they're going to spin it. So Carl's co-host and former Clinton administration official, George Stephanopoulos, unsurprisingly agreed, saying, quote, yeah, the more he tries to target him. So you can see this. there's this theme of spinning uh, Trump's desire to find out who's accusing him of uh, of uh, doing something wrong or something impeachable. He wants to know who he is. And uh, I'm sorry, but who's actually being targeted here? I mean, think about it. For the last few years, the media has been demonizing Trump uh, and his supporters to such an extent that it's given Democrat Party... Uh, that it's given de the Democrat Party base all the justification they need to take some sort of action. And I've talked a lot about this in, in past videos. Uh, but we've seen examples of this in the form of Antifa and uh, those two ICE facilities. You know, that, that happened, that occurred as a direct result of the demonization of Trump coming from the Democrat Party and the media. Uh, you know, all Trump asks for here is to face his accuser, which is kind of a misnomer in itself because the whistleblower is giving secondhand information, isn't he? He's not he's not actually giving a, a firsthand account, which we now know <laughs> used to be a requirement to, to be um, uh, categorized as a whistleblower and given the, those protections. Uh the ABC host, uh, John Carl, frets about Trump violating these standards for whistleblower protections. Uh, but for some reason, he didn't call the so-called and he didn't call out the intelligence community for covertly changing those standards literally just days before this complaint was put in. So, you know, before you had to be a first-hand whistleblower, but they just kind of went in there, you know, changed it around just a little bit, re-released it, and boom. The whistleblower comes out secondhand information, which is now apparently acceptable. Uh, it wasn't before, but for Trump, they've changed the standards, and uh, now you can give secondhand information to take down a president. Apparently, um, so the two ho the two hosts here on ABC, George Stephanopoulos and John Carl, both clearly Democrats. We know one of them was actually you know part of the Clinton campaign or Clinton administration, um, and so they're sitting there trying to imagine possible ways. Uh, to, to avoid facing Donald Trump in the 2020 election. 
with uh, the former Clinton administration official Stephanopoulos throwing out the possibility that Trump could also be impeached if his lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, were to refuse to comply with the subpoenas that were issued by the House Democrats. Stephanopoulos says, so if he doesn't comply, that could also mean an article of impeachment. They're just, they're just finding impeachment everywhere. They just reach in the hats, pull out impeachment. So my question immediately is, how would Giuliani's refusal to show up for a subpoena mean that Trump was going to be impeached? Uh, you know, who knows? I have no idea because... They never explain it in this piece. They just throw that out there, which, you know, I believe that a lot of this reporting that we're seeing is really just red meat for the base. They're really just trying to string Democrats along, trying to keep them hopeful that they're, <laughs> because it, if you just take everything at, at, at its base, Trump has a great economy, uh, border security is getting better. He's making some good, uh, you know, uh, he, he has, uh, Negotiated a better trade deal than NAFTA, although it hasn't been passed in Congress yet. And uh, like I said in yesterday's video, there's a lot of good stuff coming down the pipe if he could get support instead of just everybody you know, in the media and then the Democrat Party constantly trying to torpedo him. But back to the impeachment, I, I don't see how Giuliani uh, ignoring a subpoena would somehow mean that Trump was going to be impeached. Uh, they're two separate people. <laughs> you don't judge uh, and and sentence a president based on the actions of somebody else that he has, you know, nothing to do with. And and on the, on the topic of ignoring subpoenas, I never seen the media so outraged about this before it even nothing's even happened yet. He hasn't ignored any subpoena, but reading the news, you would never know that they're they're already reporting as if that's happened. But just remember back to the Obama administration and uh, Attorney General General Eric Holder. He was subpoenaed uh, in regards to Fast and Furious, the uh, the gun running program, secret covert program. He was subpoenaed uh, to testify about that and refused the subpoena. And in fact, Democrats, during the vote to, to censure him, they actually uh, walked out. They actually got up and walked out of Congress. And the media loved it. The media w were applauding them and, and pushing them on. So when they, say, when they <laughs> try to say that they're so outraged that Giuliani might ignore the subpoena, which I highly doubt he will. Just think of that. You know, and I'm not saying it's good or bad if he ignores it. I, I'm not a lawyer. I don't know. I'm just saying that, once again, this entire thing is being based on a complete set of double standards. You see, these are Democrats refusing to vote to censure Eric Holder for refusing to comply with the subpoena. Every attempt to impeach Trump up to this point since day one has failed. And if this latest attempt fails, uh, the Giuliani thing fails, they still have one more card to play. And that is, anything is impeachable. Appearing on Monday's Good Morning America, ABC News Chief Legal Analyst Dan Abrams adopted a remarkably flexible standard for what can justify for removing a duly elected president of the United States from office, arguing that, quote, anything could be deemed an impeachable offense. <laughs> It's not a specific violation of a crime, but that has de de been determined in the past to be an impeachable offense. Anything in theory can be impeachable. The question becomes, does the Congress want to move forward with an impeachment proceeding on that? Nothing illegal was done. And in fact, there's no evidence that there was any wrongdoing at all. You know, these same people reported for years that Trump colluded with Russia and, you know, even that he was a Russian agent. But that all predictably turned out to be a steaming pile of BS. So now they're so desperate that they're setting their standard for impeachment to literally anything. Clearly, these partisan mouthpieces for the DNC are doing all they can to better their chances in 2020. I mean, let's, let's remember back when Clinton was being impeached for lying under oath during an investigation. The media executed the exact same strategies that they do now. 
That is circle the wagons around the Democrat and focus all attacks on the political opposition. This when someone drives, as one House Judiciary Committee member put this some weeks ago, a truck bomb up to the steps of the Capitol and just dumps it on them. Now this is politically a very violent action for Ken Starr to leave this on them weeks before an election. Couldn't this be just a witch hunt? Couldn't couldn't the the, the Democrats who've been and President Clinton's people who've been defending him all these months be right that that even though he screwed up, there's some political motivation there? Let's not pretend for a moment that the Starr report is a balanced, judicious presentation. It's not. It is It is a partisan prosecutor with some zealous aides who's trying to make a case against a guy he despises. He was obligated to write a report and deliver a report to Congress. Was he also obligated to make it as adversarial as it turned out to be? In France, Le Monde described the report as a monster, worthy of the reports of the Inquisition where deviants and heretics were hunted down to the depth of their souls. It seems that nothing has changed. That's all I have for you today, folks. Uh, make sure to check out the 24-hour live stream event from the southern border on my channel starting tonight at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. The end of this video is going to be a little five-minute promo that the Operation Border Control guys put together to just explain what this event is and what they hope to accomplish. I hope to see you all there. Please like, share, and subscribe. American Patriots, Douglas Dakota here. Many of you have been asking for a long time that you wanted to see myself and American Joe band together and do things together to help America, to help make America great again. Well, I'm here to share with you some wonderful and exciting news on just that subject. People ask me, why am I going to the border? Why am I going to do a 20-day journey into dangerous territory, into cartel areas to bring the truth back to the American people. Why? Well, because I love America and I love my country. We will start in Brownsville, Texas, and we will go the entire length of the border all the way to San Diego, California to show you, the American people, what the politicians in Washington, D.C. do not want you to see. The media wants to portray a different picture. The Democrats want to distract you away from the real and problem. We are going to do a border investigation where we will be doing live streaming as well as a film crew with us to record everything that we're seeing and doing to make a documentary about our border. There's a lot of security, a lot of logistics, and a lot of technology that's got to be put in place. Not to mention the fact we're taking about 14 combat veterans on the road for 20 days. Go to bordercommand.com and see all the wonderful American patriots that will be joining us in a 24-hour marathon. Number two, share this with everyone you know. Whether you got a Facebook group you're a part of, you got some friends on Twitter, Facebook, wherever, share this information. You can share videos, you can share the website. As always, I'm Douglas Dakota, and I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. Stand behind us, patriots. We need you right now. Go to bordercommand.com for all the information you're going to need.